23.3333333333333. How easy is it to track your own van, especially with some very old tracking gauges, probably from the 1800s? Hello, you absolute legends. Welcome back to the channel. John here on a blustery old day in Boston. I'm back with the Royal Snail Van, and if you haven't seen the previous video, we found that the tyres were wearing very unevenly on the front, on the inside edge, to a point where I've had to scrap those tyres. They are illegal and spend £120 on two new ditch finders. In this video then, Dad and I are going to check the tracking on the van using some gauges that I've bought him. They've cost me 20 quid. How, uh, how far out is it? We'll soon find out. Good morning, you time-wasting amateur. <laughs> See, I'm on my socials. <laughs> How you doing? You okay? I'm all right. Have you got a full tank of fuel? Uh, why is that? It's, well, it's, according to the load weight specifications, we should have zero weight in the vehicle, so I can't have you in it. No. Nope. But 100% fuel. Okay, good. We haven't got 100% fuel, have we? We're here with the Royal Snail Van, uh, which in the intro, as I said, uh, we are going to sort the tracking out or look at the tracking. I can see that you've got what, some some sort of contraption from the 1870s on the I bet floor. that's as old as me. Uh, can you just first of all talk us through it? Because it is, what is a Dunlop? This is your Dunlop optical wheel alignment gauge. Uh, no lasers involved. Tell me about it, because I bought this for you recently from a, a garage sale. 20 quid I paid for those. Uh, any good? I think it's wonderful. Well, we've done this tracking on the Armstrong Sidley with them, so we know that they work. Can you just talk us through, before we go through the actual process, how these work and how to use them and calibrate them and all sorts? We shall have to do it then, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do it. So, the tyres were wearing on the inside edge. Yep. Which means it's towing in. Out. Out. And so we should see that there should be a negative yep. between the two. That, tow out. Yep, towing out, okay. I'll tell you what we'll do then, we'll get these in the garage. You can show us how to calibrate them. We'll do it out here in the daylight. Oh right, okay. Put you, it on the tripod, Ian. You can show us how to calibrate them and we'll go from there. Okay, so how do we do this first right. then? Get your tracking gauge. Yep. You adjust these arms so that they're the same height as the centre of the hub. Okay. And then you adjust these arms so that they fit against gently the rim. against the rim. Okay, so those are fitting against the rim. So then you get your machine, you bring the other side one, which you've exactly done the same thing, with zero in the gauges. Okay, so, so that's that got up. a mirror on that unit, yeah. and that's got a, a sort of a, a looking scope, I guess it's got a prism on it. So you're putting those two together. Oh, I see, so you've aligned these on that wheel, and you've aligned these on that wheel, and putting these together. In theory, these should align perfectly, right? So we want this to be at zero. Okay. So we look down the periscope. Yes. Should have a little rubber of collar on there. Okay, so we're looking down the periscope. What can you see? In there, there's a, a line. Yes. Oh, I see, and that line reflects on this mirror here. The line looks down there, goes to that mirror and comes back, and I'm, then I'm seeing that point. So there, on here, on this metal plate, is a point. Let's take a look at that. Okay, I can see that, yeah. I'm looking down there, so I can see that line. Yep. And I'm looking at there, and it's reflecting back in there, so it's twice the width of the car, really, isn't it? And I'm lining it up, I'm just calibrating it so that my line, what I can see, yep. is on the point of that arrow. And that scale there needs to be on zero. Oh, I see. So you've aligned up the uh, arrow with that, and it has lined up at zero. Yep. I'm guessing if it wasn't, you could calibrate the line. You move this little slide. Yep. Okay, good. So you've talked us through that. You've, you've shown us how to set it up and look and calibrate it. Now what do we do? Well, we've put the wheels on the car. We've driven it backwards and forwards. Yes. And you've gently stopped yes. where I asked you to. Yeah. On a flat piece of concrete. It's got to be flat, yeah. It's got to be level, right? So you can't it's do it, this it's on your be level, It's got to be flat. It doesn't matter about it being level. We're not doing caster camber. Okay. This, this isn't 100% level, but it's flat. Flat. I've marked the top of the wheel so we know where we are. Yes. And then we'll put the gauges we'll put on. Put them back in place. So these go back in exactly the same place that we took them off from when we calibrated them against the wheel. Well, there will be. The car ain't moved. Nope. Van hasn't moved. They're back in the same place. Flat against the... Uh, Yep. The wheel there. And so now you're going to look down there, I'm guessing. Yeah, but now look at my hand. 
Oh yeah, I've had to move it, look. Oh really, let's have a look. So now it's towing out. So you're looking down the periscope and aligning that arrow with the mirror. Yeah, also, because the end of the point's quite hard to see, you're making sure it's equidistant between the two lines. Okay. There's two lines here as well, look. So what's that telling us then now? Because we're looking it's at that gauge. 20 minutes. Right, so, so that, that I'm just double checking. end piece with the bubble in, or the magnifying piece here, you've aligned it up. Yep. And it's out, we can see it's out. So it's 20 minutes there, which is two and a quarter millimetres. Right, what does that mean? So the number one figure I've taken is 20 minutes. Yeah. So now we'll take the gauge off, rotate the wheel. Oh, so we're going to measure it in a few different places. Do it in three places, mate, yeah. And then take the average of all three. You've got it. That makes sense. So we're going to rotate the van forward a wee bit. About there. Whoa. Yeah, and do the same again. Same again then, so I'll put it on my side, eh? Yes, please. And can you do this with alloy wheels as well? Yep. Yeah. Hey on. I'm on. So let's have a look at measurement number two. Ah, that's good news. What's that? Exactly the same. So does that mean it's not running out of true? It's not far out, not, not like the Armstrong Siddeley. No, I bet that was far out. It was, it was horrible. Do you check it forwards and backwards or? No, you always check it after you've gone forwards. Why is that? Because that's the way the wheels want to be when they're driving along. Right, okay, so it's not putting any undue strain on anything. About there? A bit more. Whoa! Right, so this is the third measurement. Do you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna look down it this time. Yep. And have a look. Have a peep. Have a peep. Ah. Uh -huh. So at the moment, I can't make head and a tail of that. That's because it's not right. It's not right. Your eyesight must be better than mine. Well, that's a, it might be a problem, son. Here, have a look. You've got to squint. You have got to squint. I'm glad you can see that. But that one is 30. So that one's a bit different. It'd be slight, it's only a slight bend in the rim or something, mate. Right, okay. That's what it boils So down 20, to. 20, 30, add them all together and divide them by three. So that's 70 divided by three. 70 divided. You go on, get your phone out, let's do it properly. Uh, 70 divided by three, people will be shouting at their screens now telling us what it is. 70 divided by three. It's 29 point something, is it? <laughs> okay. 28 point something, just do it to 28 point something. 23.3333333333333333. Okay, you can stop doing your 333 now. So it's 23.3 recurring? Yes. Okay, fine. So that's what it should be? That's what it is. Oh, that's what it is. And what should it be? Zero. It says here, minus 0.9 mil to plus 0.9 mil. So we're aiming for parallel, aren't we? Yes. So it should be zero. So now, we, so now we've got that figure, we've got the 23.3 so we recurring. Zero. We're looking for zero. Yeah. We now need to change stuff on the car. Yes, mate. We adjust the track rods. And now on Tony Hart's gallery. So ding, 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 ding. Think about it. This Pete is the in way Lincolnshire has sent us this picture This is of the way the wheel wheels are facing at the minute. No, no, tell, talk us now when I'm not talking nonsense. The wheels are facing out that way. So yep. what we need to do is lengthen these track rods yes. to make the wheels do Stand that. up straight. Why would them sitting in like that cause the wear on the inside edge? On the outside edge, they're sitting out, aren't they? The car's going up the road with its wheels stuck out like that. So it's wearing on the inside edge, yes, yes. that's right, yes. What's it doing? How's it going down the road? Going up the road like this. It's good, that is. It wants to be going up the road like that. Yeah, okay. So we're going to do lengthen the track rod ends on both sides. Yeah, evenly. By, I was going to say, by how much? Well, we'll do half a turn for a start and see what happens. So, so it's that, a bit trial and error, so this, isn't to, it? Well, it's, in the old days, you'd have had it on a pit. Right. But it's in the modern days now, you put it on a ramp and you've got your thing that clamps to the wheel and you've yep. got your lasers and you've got your blooming LEDs. And so I've, got, I've had the option, I've been back to the garage where I bought these from. Okay. 
they've had their sale, and the laser tracking wheel alignment systems didn't sell. Oh, good. Would you prefer to do this with a laser no. system or these systems? That's just the job for tinkering around in a shed. So, so, so what? This is just the job for Fred in a shed. So I'm not going to say I'm going to buy you the laser alignment kit, but for what reason would you prefer to use this over laser? Because I'm rolling around on the floor, aren't I? Do you know what you're doing with these as well? Okay, yeah, good. I've been using these since I was 16 year old. Good. That's just handy to know. I bet them track gauges look at me and think, ha ha, I'm older than he is. <laughs> okay, so what's the plan? We're going to lengthen that track rod. So this is the bit you've got to remember, because when you get old like me, yeah. you forget. So we're going to lengthen them. Okay. So that means screw them out. Good, let's do that. So I'm guessing to do that, we're going to have to take the wheels off. Uh, no. No? We're oh, right, okay. We're going to remove the track gauges. We're going yes. to start the engine up. We're going to crank it one way and turn it. And then we're going to do the same to the side. Okay. And then we're going to grumble like mad because we've gone too far. <laughs> You think half a turn's gonna to be too much? Let's do a quarter of a turn. So out come the track gauges, and you want me to move my van back? No. Oh. Not yet. So out come the track gauges, where do we put them? Just put them there, just put them there. Just move them back four foot. So we don't put them together. So I can just see in there that you've marked those track gauge, track Yeah, I did that while we got the wheel off. I also made sure I could get the nuts undone in case we had to get the old hot spanner on them. So thankfully we're not having to get the hot spanner on them. No. You're gonna, what are you gonna use to turn them? Aha, mole grips. Ah, these are vice grips. We are now going to call them self-grip wrenches. Oh right, not mole grips. No, because they're not mole grips. Why are they called self-grip wrenches? Why is a vacuum cleaner called a hoover? Uh, right, okay. now concentrate what you're doing. We're gonna screw this one out a quarter of a turn. Bit fiddly. It's not fiddly. So you've screwed that one out. Two flats, which is a quarter of a turn, isn't it? Now to do yon side. Same again, same sort of turn. Right. I've lengthened them both a quarter of a turn. Ah, it's Postman Mike. Sorry, what have you just done? Moved it backwards and forwards and shook the wheel to centralise everything. Oh, good. So now we can recheck it. Yeah, yes, now I can do my bit. Which is put this on a wheel. I'm good at that. <laughs> Apprentice of the week. Ha, ah, where's the camera? I will not stand in front of the camera. <laughs> Even though that is where I need to be working. Right, Galileo, what can you see in your telescope? I can see it's exactly parallel. Is it? It is. Parallel bar and that's naughty bit sticking out. Well, tell me now. So now we'll do it again. So because you're happy that you think you've got it at that somewhere near. Yeah, we're going to do it the three times. So that one was in a bit. Yep. The other one was out a bit. Yep. Out a bix. Whoa! Oh, crazed. I've gotten crazed. Ready? Stick it back on Gromit. Back on Gromit. Are we on? We're on, Mayot. How are we looking? That's out a bit. Okay. So we're out a bit, in a bit, out a bit. We need to lock them lock nuts up and call that and check it, double check it. You happy with that, yeah? yeah? Do we run the risk of it moving when we move the lock nuts? Yep. So we double check it again afterwards. Get in the van. I'm not getting in the van. Lock your lock nuts. Bonus Lincolnshire content, there's some tractor stuff happening in the field. Tractor stuff. Yon side being locked down. No, the lock nuts are locked. Lock nuts are locked. Straighten it up, check her again. Say when. Hang on a minute. Apprentice. Hang on a minute. I'm struggling to get it to line up. There you go. Now try that. Towing in and that's naughty bit. And hey, before really? it was towing out. Oh, don't worry about it. Come on, let's... Come on. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Some customers paying for this. We've got loads more to do today, yet. Yeah. Got a bloody bonus to earn. <laughs> I'm thinking about dinner. How's that one looking? Parallel. Oh, good. You have to employ a really camera person. 
Yeah, I know. If you need a part, actually a full-time job, let me know. I have considered employing a video editor. <laughs> Ready? Maybe you need a job in a production crew. What's it called on movie sets, the people that do all the food and drink? Is it craft services? I have no idea. We need a craft service department. Towing in a that's naughty bit is near enough for me, Gromit. What's that? But it's over in between parallel and a that's naughty bit out and a that's naughty bit in. So what you're saying is it's better than it was. It's bob on. It's bob on. Okay, good. Is it enough to no, pause? No, no, Is it enough to... Well, sorry, I is thought you were channeling your inner Freddie Mercury then. Uh, is it enough to have caused that inner tyre wear? No. Really? What else is causing that? A bloody great big fat bloke driving around in it. All right, you've been driving my van, have you? Overloading the van. All right, I didn't realise you'd been borrowing it when I've been at work. Um, okay. That's a genuine question. Should you do that with the driver sat in it? No. No. Should you do it with the van laden full of proton not parts? Not according to the chart. The chart says there's no load in it, Yeah. but with a full tank of fuel. Mm. Well, I've got nearly a full tank of fuel. So what you're saying is... We need to keep an eye on it. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Because I agree with you. I don't think that that little bit of adjustment that we've done has caused such massive tyre wear on the vane. What's next for the van? You tell me. We've got that issue to sort at the back. Where are we going to fix it? Uh, we're going to have to keep replacing stuff until it goes. Right. We've got... I'll tell you what we've got to do. What's that? We've got to jack it up. We've got to take the wheels off and put the wheel trims on. Oh, yeah. That's annoying. Right, there we go. We've got to do that now. Wheel trims are going back on. I don't know about you, but I think that was 20 quid well spent on them. It was. It was a bargain. They are about 80 or 90 to get an old one like that off the Ebays. We can do... All the tracking now. Hey, here's a good idea. We could do the tracking on the smart. The purple smart. Yes, we could sometime. Job done. All I'm going to do, son, is I'm just going to double check my track rod lock nuts. Yep. And put the wheel trims on and... Robert's your mother's brother. So rather annoyingly, the wheels have to come off to put the wheel trims on. But you're going to just check the... Uh, track rod ends while we've got it off anyway so someone pointed out recently to me that these wheel trims do look like the rover 75 union alloys yeah they do don't they have they fitted okay with the outside wheel trim balancing weights they've put on i'll be honest with you i haven't checked it it might stop them jiggling jiggling yeah <laughs> i just thought to myself my adapter hasn't snapped lately. And you just knackered it. Yeah, Great like, times. What went through my mind? Is that an Urbauer adapter? But why did I think about it and then it happened? You've tempted fate, my friend. Why did I Hang think... Hang a minute, let me start thinking about winning the lottery and having Taylor Swift what? want to marry me. Taylor Swift. Yeah, let's forget Taylor Swift. Bet she just... wouldn't like protons. I, I can't... I, I do not believe it. Is it Urbauer? Yeah. <laughs> I was in Screwfix this morning. So was I. And uh, I was one of those people who wanted to see the thing I was purchasing before I got it. Can I have a look at that please, Duck, before I buy it? What did you buy from Screwfix this morning? A radiator shelf. Oh, right. I bought a new lamp the other day. Where? I didn't oh. buy it. I took it back under guarantee. I was 20 odd days under my guarantee expiring. Oh, well, there you go. Good news. Uh, I bought a, uh, what's it called? Has block. Yes, for your shed. For my shed to keep Mrs. John Keaton out of it. And that is because Mrs. John Keaton has got a habit of buying cat food in bulk at the moment and storing it in the proton garage. Just go fetch me a blooming breaker bar, would you, John, please? Breaker bar! It's on the bench. Keep thinking about buying myself a proper impact wrench. Got a windy gun? No, I've got windy guns, but my compressor's not up to it. So why haven't you bought yourself an impact wrench? Because the ones that are in my price point, I don't think they'll be blinking powerful enough. How much are you looking to pay for, a, for one of them? Oh, they've got some cracking deals on the Screwfix website. Well, why didn't you buy anything? No, listen, this is for a, one of these and a brushless LXT drill. Yeah. 
Only because nobody had got them in stock. Ah, <laughs> right, OK. I, I tried Aberdeen and everywhere, and nobody had got nobody one. Nobody had got one. That's because all the traders have bought them up, haven't they? You've got, you've got two batteries and a pack for about 180 quid. Bargain. So you've got the tool and the drill, but it's not a bargain, is it? Because nobody's got it. you any. can't get them. Yeah, no. fair enough. It's BS, so, isn't it? So what... Um, what impact driver? I'm, I'm thinking it's Christmas soon. What impact driver are you looking for? It's going to be a Makita one, isn't it? But I've got another battery. I've got Makita stuff, so I said the batteries. Isn't it? So what's wrong with that impact driver I bought you there? Well, this one. Yeah. Well, apart from the fact it's a G series or something, isn't it? It's nice. like as old as them blinking. Uh... Oh, I see. Okay. Well, if you're listening and you can suggest an impact driver I could buy for Dad, send me the model numbers. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll use um, we'll use our YouTube revenues, Mrs. John Cooper and I. This uh, for this video. I'm keen to do various ones, and some of them are only about as powerful as one of these tinkering things. Mm, they are. You'll that would show... annoy me. That would. You'll have to get your Argos catalogue and leave it open at the right page. What you need to do is bring me a wheel trim and stuff. Talking about Argos, I was in Argos this morning. I was customer number one. The Greek <laughs> god of shopping. <laughs> Come on, where's them wheel trims? Imagine being the very first person to order something from Argos on a day. You'd be like a king, wouldn't you? I'm surprised you didn't get a special discount code. Yeah, or a party. Well, I was happy because I got my product £15 cheaper than I would have done on Amazon. That's unbelievable. On go the wheel trims. Then down will come the van. Then the wheels will be talked up. And then, job done. Masterclass in tracking with antique track gauges. What are you doing now? I'm trying to film me out, Trey. I'm walking. Somebody's got to do the work. I've turned your microphone off so I can film the outro. If you... Uh, see, now he's put me off. Well, there you have it then. It's taken us probably about 45 minutes to do that, including the explanation and the calibration of the kit. If you've enjoyed the video, thumbs up please. Uh, has that fixed the problem? Has that little bit of tracking being out caused all that wear? Probably not. So we are going to keep an eye on it uh, in the future. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with what we're doing here in blustery old Lincolnshire and uh, to keep up to date with the Royal Snail Van and the rest of the fleet. There's so much stuff still to come. Have you used any of those tracking alignment tools previously? Maybe you've got a set kicking away in the garage, gathering dust, or maybe you're, like us, still using them. Let me know in the comments down below. Till next time, whatever you're getting up to from us here in Lincolnshire, goodbye. That's it for another video. Genuinely, thanks for watching, guys. You are all absolute legends. I've selected a couple more videos here for you that I think you might like. And don't forget, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do to always stay up to date with what we're doing.